Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to It's Poppin'. If you've ever gone from cleaning the exterior of your pop-up camper to cutting an 11 by 11 inch hole in the roof of your pop-up camper, definitely make sure you subscribe. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is take out all the cushions, curtains, valences, mattresses, anything that's like the you know soft goods essentially, and hopefully we can wash up some of this stuff, specifically the mattresses. So we're gonna clean the exterior of our pop-up camper and essentially we treat this like we're washing our car. Traditionally we've used something like a foaming car wash in conjunction with um, a foam cannon. But today what we're gonna try is some of this um, chemical guys, it's a body wash uh, and wax. So we're gonna try and uh, do the hybrid approach. But if you're gonna do them separately, all I can say is just make sure that the, if you're gonna wax it in addition to washing it, use something that is um, vinyl safe. So for example, this Meguiar's wax that we have, it specifically says it's not safe for vinyl. And so if you care about your vinyl decals or anything like that, we really don't because they're already peeling on our Jayco. But if you do, definitely uh, double check the back of the bottle on whatever wax you're gonna be using. Now, in addition to that, you just wanna be careful of where you're pressure washing or foam canning, is that a word? on the camper. Of course, just be cognizant of areas that you might be forcing water into. Well guys, we uncovered a couple problems with the camper as one does when, uh, whenever you wash it. So first and foremost is this right here. As you can see, it's on the front of the camper. And there was some silicone caulk covering it up, but of course pressure washing uh, uncovered uh, more of the story. But the second um, thing we uncovered was on the roof. And right here on the back of the roof, there's this really small crack. And it looks like it kind of fractured around it. And I have no idea if that's going all the way through or not. So those are definitely some things that I want to address as far as getting the camper, of course, sealed up and waterproofed up.
So now that we've at least taken the first layer of dirt and grime off the pop-up camper, I'm gonna take this opportunity to throw some bubble levels on our uh, camper. So uh, I'm just gonna clean off those areas a little bit more with some isopropyl alcohol, stick those on. So I'm gonna try one of these guys and um, I have to find, find a way to mount this on here, but um, some sort of adhesive uh, sticky thing should do the trick, but uh, I'm gonna try one of those as well in conjunction with the other ones and just see how well it, or how well we like it, if it can take the place of two levels at once or if it uh, doesn't really do the trick. So I'm gonna throw them all on and uh, see how we like them going forward. Hear me out for the repair on the side of the pop-up camper. What I think I'm going to do is I'm gonna hit that spot with a just a Dremel and I might, you know, experiment with some of the various bits I have, but obviously what I wanna do is clear out a lot of that, um, I don't know, loose particles and things like that that aren't actually attached to the camper too well. And then what I think I'm gonna hit it with is some of this JB weld um, water weld Now the reason I'm going to do this is because a it works on aluminum or at least it says it does B it's waterproof or at least water resistant, which is of course the whole goal of patching that up C it's sandable and D it's paintable. So I hope by using this epoxy that we can reasonably patch up that spot that grew quite a bit after we um, power washed off the camper. And the other good thing about this is at least up until the point that we might be able to paint it or get it to look a little bit better, it's kind of an off-white color, which of course is very similar to the pop-up camper color. So hopefully it won't look too bad. That's it. Alright guys, so I hit the major spot with uh, JV Weld. I may have put a little too much on, but I think that's okay because of course I can sand it down hopefully evenly with the rest of our uh, siding. One thing I kind of wish I did a little bit was take off more of the uh, decaling on here. That way the JV Weld wasn't sitting on it, but I guess the lesson learned there. And then while I was... Um, Finishing up that, I noticed there was another small piece of aluminum that was flaking out as well. That actually pushed right through and fell out the edge here. So, did the exact same thing on that small little hole. So next up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take just a very small amount of the JB uh, water weld and put it on that crack, that really small crack that's on the roof. So I was looking at these other patches on the roof, for example, 
we have this one right here and it looks pretty good but I've got some bad news on the other one so I started examining this other patch if you will if you can even call it that on the roof and it covered up almost all of this except I could see that little crack coming out I'm like oh no so as one does I kept digging further and further and realized that's some pretty extensive uh, cracking in the roof there and whatever they used isn't very good luckily Pressing around here doesn't seem like the roof is compromised, so maybe maybe that patch did a good enough job, but not good enough for me for sure. I think it's just foam under here, and I, I haven't seen any indices of water damage right here on the inside, but you never know. So not good news, and I'm a little disheartened by it that I kind of missed this when uh, first looking at the camper, but uh, I think we can make it right. All right, so I've let the uh, JB water weld uh, dry for a day. I'm gonna hit it with some sandpaper and see if we can uh, make this look decent. Well guys, there it is. I am the first to admit I am not a body restoration expert by any means. Um, it, in my opinion, it doesn't look the greatest unpainted as is, but hopefully sometime down the road, we might get to that. Um, a lot of that blue decaling is coming off and we wanna address that, things of that nature, and hopefully make it uh, look a little bit better. But in my mind, it's better to not have a big hole or at least an area where water can get in and damage what's underneath further as opposed to the cosmetics. So in my mind, I feel better, even though it might not look quite as good as it did before. So here's the plan for fixing the hole in the roof. Here we have a 11 by 11 box, um, you know, taped off essentially. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a 11 by 11 hole in the roof of our camper. So this is either really dumb or a smart idea. Um, time will tell. So what I did is uh, I picked up a rooftop vent fan and that's gonna go right here. Now what I just have to be cognizant of not hitting is we have a speaker right over here and we have a light right here. I'm about 95% sure that this is just foam. So uh, <laughs> I'm nervous to say the least, but uh, we'll see how it turns out. All right, well, I'm glad I didn't hit anything important. And like I said, it appears to all just be styrofoam. And as you saw, there's definitely some water in this styrofoam that's underneath the fiberglass and above the aluminum.
All right, so that is one 12 volt vent fan installed. So what I need to do, and I didn't pre-plan this, but I need to pick up some of this track stuff that essentially runs along here. And it's kind of funny, there's absolutely nothing right there and they shorted it. So I need to pick up some more of that stuff so I can cover up our, our wiring right here and kind of tee it off and uh, clean that up. But uh, we'll have to find some of this track. So one of the cool things about how I was able to tie this fan into the electrical system is that it's running off the same switch as the lights. So for example, if I bring you over here, we have this light switch on and off and you kind of see the lights flashing. So because those control the lights, they also control the fan here. So if we go ahead and turn the fan on, of course it'll start up and our lights right here work and all that fun stuff. But then if we go and go to leave the pop-up, we can just turn it off just like that. And all the lights in the fan turn off. However, of course, if we want to have the fan on, we can just control the light and, and, and the fan on with the lights off. We can just turn the lights on and off individually with their switches. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. As always, if you enjoyed this video, definitely hit that like button helps YouTube know that maybe other people might enjoy this video as well. Of course, subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, hopefully see you in the next video. If not, hopefully see you out there camping.